Well, the kit has arrived for me to start looking at. I think there's quite a bit of studying to do uh, to make this sensitive nailing tool and all the materials required are supplied here. So we've got some silver steel, brass, mild steel and mild steel for the rest of it for the body. Take it, these are the fingers that I'll need cutting. Um, and with it is a substantial set of drawings which I'm not going to delve and show you too much because there might be some copyright thing on there but there's quite a few pages um, there's one, two, three, four the, the slide arrangement which is made with these and brass and I guess the mild steel for the thread uh, I can show you that that's just the mechanism for driving the jaws in and out, which is this mechanism that fits between two cheeks, which are those two blocks of steel. I don't know if anything's got to come off them in width. I know there's some channels to um, machine in them because I believe these have to slide in it. Is it these? Yeah. These have got to slide up and down, which is the mechanism that pulls the jaws in and out. So that's got to be machined out. But the drawings are quite um, technical, I suppose is the word. The proper technical drawings, and they're quite explicit. Um, there's a fair bit of work to do. The machining of the brass is a lot of work there because. Uh, got to have a funny shape cut out of it so I'm um, just showing how it all starts I've got a milling machine I've got a lathe if you read the bump that they give you from Hemingway kits it tells you the guy made these on uh, a Super 7 Myford lathe yeah Myford Super 7 lathe using a vertical slide no milling machine or anything um, I've got the advantage that I have got a milling machine and another advantage I've got is I bought myself a, a rotary table I've actually got two of a little three inch one that I bought in error thinking I don't know why I don't know what I was thinking but to be quite honest with you it's not much good it'd probably be alright on a little watchmaker's or a mini mini mill but it's too small uh, so I've got a six inch one um, it's foreign import one but everything seems to work quite well on it, there's no slack um, or play in it. So that'll be a big advantage when I want to cut the radiuses in these steels. There's quite a lot of radiusing to do. So it, it'll be a, a handy thing to have. I mean, uh, the corners of these have got to be rounded. Um, and it suggests that if you haven't got the equipment to do it, that you really only need a pillar drill and some files and various other pieces of equipment and you could make this um, obviously you will need the um, a small lathe because you've got to mill channels which you couldn't really do with a file uh, but it's, it's saying you could do all these radiuses I'm going to have the advantage that I can clamp that down onto the rotary table of course and I can turn it so that I can uh, I can mill the corners once I've done one and set up right I can do two, three, four then I can do the other one, so the eight, once I've got a set up done. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of work to do. I'm not kidding myself, <laughs> a lot of work. When I first opened it, I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? But unfortunately, you can't buy one of those. You can only make one. If, if, you, can, if you can buy one, then tell me, but I've never seen one, apart from what's been made by Hemingway Kits. There's the grey and meat design, which I really was going to do. Uh, but then I thought, well, I started pricing materials up, funny enough. You see, like, that bit of brass. You probably can't buy that bit of brass. You've probably got to buy 100 mil. So take that into account with what I'm going to tell you. Um, and pieces of metal, you know, the, that might only come in 300 mil. I'd, I did look through eBay and I scoured and scoured looking for steel. And uh, it worked out that it was more than what this cost just to get all the steel. 
because of the bulk you had to buy, I'm saying bulk as in lengths, more than I needed, you know, that block there, you probably can't buy it like that, it's probably going to be a piece that long, and it's probably going to be seven quid or something like that, uh, whereas, you know, you obviously chop it up, and you throw it in the drawer, and you'd probably never use what's left, or you might do one day on something else, um, and I should imagine, when I finish building this, I'll have had enough, <laughs> and probably won't want to do another one, it'd be lovely to, and really, I suppose I ought to measure all this stock up and write it all down before I begin all these sizes just in case it'd be an, I an idea to do that or you know if I cock something up uh, and I've butchered it that much I don't know what size it was um, I, yeah I, I, I ought to make a, a stock list of what's here before I begin I'm, I'm not in any hurry um, the summer is past its centre now isn't it the, the nights are getting darker so I won't be going out as much on the bike within probably a month's time. So, you know, and the colder nights are drawing and it's time to come in here and do my work. So it's probably going to take me right into winter to do this. I hope it isn't into next year. But I will uh, video it and show it as I go along because um, I think some people may be interested. I've scoured YouTube and only, only one I can find is a guy that's made one and it's beautiful the way he's made it's lovely but he's taking it apart to blacken all these steel parts he's blacked them all um to be quite honest with you, it looked lovely as it was but troubling mild steel he put that in a holder up on the wall or in a cupboard and by next year it'll be rusty so you, you suppose you've got to do something with it okay that's enough for this little bit of video anyway I'll, uh, well, I've been uh, having a right study of these drawings. In fact, I've been all afternoon studying them. Um, there's an awful lot of work. Uh, and it's deciding where to begin. And I thought, I'll just do these two little items first and get my hand back in. Um, one is a pivot pin that's made from silver steel uh, that uh, goes at the bottom of the device. Uh, to pivot one of the jaw arms and then the top one is bigger this this one here um, it's got it's three eighths rod uh, and then it's got to have a camshaft on it uh, half an inch long three eighths of an inch in so I need to face that off machine that down to five sixteenths and then measure half an inch mark that and then machine the rest of it down to five sixteenths and then I guess I'll put that in the four jaw and offset it so that when I run it the bar's going to be doing that and turn my um, camshaft on there the camshaft is so that when you eventually have it all built up, there's a lever goes in, in there and you turn it and the camshaft obviously rises and falls as you turn it uh, and it pushes the jaws down further into the knurl. So once you set it. Well, this is a piece of steel, a steel rod, a precision rod, 3 8 diameter. And this is the one that's got to have the eccentric cut on it, the camshaft, if you like. And um, 
I've got to offset this a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, the piece of rod they give you to do this kit with uh, isn't very long, unfortunately. So, uh, f for the amount I'm going to need to work with, I've got it set there. But it's only sat in the um, forge or chuck for about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. So if I offset that and tighten it up, there's a good chance that's not going to be running through. So the only thing I can think of doing is to push it further in so it's seated on the whole jaw. Centre it, bang on. Put my DTI on, do my measuring for me one sixteenth of an inch offset and then just undo two jaws right carefully and pull the work out and nip it back up and recheck it. I think that's got to be the best way. I've never done this sort of thing before so it's all guesswork for me but I think that's the best way because if I thought you use the DTI on it where it is now it's not got a lot of purchase in those jaws and I know it's not a badly worn chuck or anything but I'd rather actually push it in some more which would be past where I want to cut it so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to shove it in there so it's at full depth of those jaws do all my measuring nip it get it where I want it and then just undo two jars and then uh, bring it back out and tighten it back up and check it again. Oh this is hard stuff. I don't know what it's called, drill rod. Silver steel, whatever it is, it's hard. But I'll get a centre in here because there's not going to be a lot of, uh, as I said, um, grip in the chuck. Basically, what I'm showing is eject the chuck. using proper loop. Only your best synthetic oil, that's all. Oh no, I'm jumping a step ahead here. This needs bringing out a chuck now. Right, it's going to be a laborious thing, I'm not going to show that. So if you can see that, I've got that clamped up, I've got a dead centre in, plenty of um, synthetic oil lube in it, so I need to remark all this now. So I've brought out, you can maybe see, um, the, but the end of the bar is just there, so that's where it is in relationship. So it's only nipping on that end bit, but it's got a steady in it. So I'm hoping it's going to be stable enough to turn it. I would say it's a shame they didn't give you an extra inch of metal. I suppose it costs money. So yeah, I'll take this off now and uh, knock that off. Uh, my next job's to turn that. What we're doing it now? It's eleven o'clock at night. I've, Saturday night, I've got a big barbecue to do for tomorrow for all the family, so I, uh, I'll knock it off here and add to it as I go.
ago. This is the second part that I'm doing. Um, basically, it's got to have a, a raised section in the centre. The sides are to be a quarter. Correct? Yeah. So this is 516 silver steel rod. And that stays at 516 in the centre and the two ends go down to a quarter and the total length of the whole thing I believe is a inch and one and a quarter inches the total length so there's some to come off this but I haven't studied the drawings enough to find out whether I need whatever I cut off but I am going to put a centre in this end so that I'm not pushing it when I'm turning it totally boo-booed, I've just boo-booed because that's not a centre that's a spotting drill you idiot you stupid drill you, why did you pick that up? that's seen better days, not sharpening god that ain't that much better Keep the uh, rattle post away from work. Okay, I'm ready to start and set up. Come back when I've done it. All what's blowing up.
there, that's going to be 3 eighths. 3 eighths outside diameter. Cold. 3 eighths outside, 5 sixteenths bore. These two little bushes for the top arm. Just thought I'd show a little bit of machining. Some people might appreciate it. Wasn't sure whether to turn this down first and then bore the diameter. The problem I've got is I haven't got any imperial drills and that's a 5 16 bar. I'll turn this off. Um, so I've ordered um, from Kronos uh, a set of imperial drills. I think it's a 29 piece set. What I have got... Uh, I have got a reamer to ream it. What I have got is some milling cutters. So I've drilled a hole and I could actually take that down but to be honest with you I don't know how steady it would be using a tailstock and a drill bit that's probably got a bit of movement in it and really that would want setting up in milling machine wouldn't it and plunging down you'd get a much more rigid fixture assuming I've got something that I could fixture that to yeah Actually, these are marked 516 and I've got one, and might be this one, I'll have to check. That's just a little bit under, which would probably be alright, because if I'm going to ream it, I'd want to be just under, wouldn't I, ideally, to get a clean uh, reamed hole at 516. Um, what I've actually got is a, a friend of mine's lent me these. So, cause I've got a set of imper uh, metric, but I've no imperial. So these are the sizes I need. Um, they're all uh, M oh, well, th those three are MT1, but I've got an MT1 to two adapter. That's just a, a tap wrench type. Hmm. I'll come back when I've done more. I'm just uh, plodding on. Clarkson. A four flute. Slot mill. So I drilled all the centre out already so that it didn't matter. So I've plunged that down. I just hope that uh, we're still well under so we can get this reamer through. I think it's this one. Yeah. There's still room for that to ream. And I'm onto the bigger piece of the bar, I'll have to bring it out some more because this piece has got to be bigger and it's for, where are we? It's for that cam, that cam profile there. It's got to fit that, which is 3 8 bar, that's only 5 16 so that's the same as this. Um, and then a bigger outside bar obviously and that's a bush that does the lifting when you're doing the knurling. Okay. Still more to take off yet, but I just thought I'd show um, using a, these are more and right. Three twenty-five, three fifty-three, seventy-five, three ninety-five, three ninety-seven. I've got that right. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety-five, three nine-seven. 
Let's see how that compares to a cheap up here. Well, the modern right, but 396, 397. Yeah, showing, these are showing 396. That's 396,000. So it's 1,000 difference between a, a proper calipers and some digital ones. Need that cleaning off. Jobs are good, so that's that part finished. And I'll have to look at the drawings and see what's next. So I've one, two, three, four, five, six parts to that. Crazy. Uh, one thing I have forgotten. Um, I thought this was complete, um, but it's not because. There's a little boss made for Ender there. I wondered what it was for originally, but I, I understand now probably. If you were to pull on that lever and raise that cam onto a knurl, um, there's a good chance you'll snap that thread off. It's on a 2BA piece of 316 mile steel rod. So, yeah, I've got oil on me. So, I've got this, which comes with a kit, and obviously one little bit of it is for a boss for there. I'll show it on the drawing. It's this boss here, and that goes on the end, and then you screw your 2BA 316 piece of rod through it. And I'm sure then that that gives support so that you're not riving on the thread, you're in fact trying to shear the thread, which obviously the shear factor of a 2BA is probably quite high because most of your load's going to be absorbed with that. So it's just a little cap. I'm going to make it. Um, just tells you to lock tight it on, which is shown there. So my next job, I guess, will be these side cheeks to have a go at. So I've got the steel for them. So it's a bit rough, actually. Um, it's obviously stock flat bar. It's very dimpled. I mean, if you were to get a smooth finish on that, you'd have to stone it or wet and dry for ages to get that smooth. I wouldn't want to be running a milling cutter over it. I suppose it'd be better off just hand faced. It'd be a shame not to because it's rough. Even if you were to chemical black it, it, uh, it wouldn't be very nice. So there to do is two of those. Okay. It's very close. Just got on the right little bit out of it to five sixteens. Again, I'd, I ran a reamer down. This, well, I 
can only assume this ream is well worn. It's miles out, it's, it's measured in about four and a half thou under. I know some do read slightly under, but I don't think that much. So all I could do was put one of these new drills I got from Kronos, these 316 through, which was that one. And unfortunately, it's just still a fraction tight. Just squeaking a bit there. Maybe that'll take it out. Can you hear it? Just there. If it only wants a fraction out, maybe that's enough. That'll do. No, that'll do. I don't want to go anymore. I can always run a bit of uh, fine emery or something on the inside just to take care of any little. Well, there's no burrs on there, but. Okay, so uh, I think this is called for a square shoulder. It doesn't have anything on it. I'll just break that edge on both sides, but only break it. And then this one's parting off at the right length and chamfering I'll turn it round, put the chamfer on it and it's finished. And that is definitely the handle bit done. See if I have that on centre. Bit warm. No, that won't go far enough. No, 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 no. That's the opposite way.
I've turned all my tools around the wrong way around. Do it. I mean, swapping tool all the right. <laughs> I just need to clean that off and deburr that centre. But that's done, yeah. That's the other little handle cover. It needs a hole drilling in there. Apart from that, it's finished. It's like a little volume knob, doesn't it? Fit. So that has to be drilled for that, but I can't assume that that goes right on there because there's the side cheek here and the bush. So until that's all fitted, I can't actually drill that, otherwise I'm bound to get it in the wrong place. And I want to drill it once, don't I? Okay, onwards and upwards to the next little project. <laughs> 